Hi, welcome back with a new IGCC ICT lesson. Uh, in this video, we will see a walkthrough of the Edexcel IGCC ICT Unit 1 Digital Devices lesson number 2. Uh, this is on peripheral devices. In this lesson, we cover the input peripheral devices and my next lesson will be on the output peripheral devices. Uh, also, I need to remind you that the first lesson on digital device types is already added in this channel and please go through it if you haven't already. I will put the link in the uh, description box. So, please subscribe so you won't miss uh, that video. Okay. So starting the lesson now and at the end you will find some practice questions uh, based on the things that we are learning today. Okay, uh, so peripheral devices. Peripheral device uh, is an internal or external device that connects directly to a computer but does not contribute to the computer's primary function such as computing. Uh, it helps end users access and use the functionalities of a computer. Peripheral devices basically can be categorized into three parts. Input uh, devices, output devices, storage devices. And uh, so let's see examples of these three types. Okay. Uh, if we look. Uh, what are input devices? Input device is any piece of computer hardware used to provide data and instructions to a computer system. So like examples, as you can see in the screen, uh, keyboard pointing devices such as mouse, tracker ball, trackpad, joystick, graphic tablet. And then we have scanners such as OCR scanner, barcode and uh, OMR scanners and also biometric scanners and then we have uh, card readers such as magnetic strip, programmable chips, uh, RFID tokens and then we also have input devices such as sensors. You will uh, learn different types of sensors and uh, these input devices are in detail in the lesson. Uh, then uh, output devices such as uh, webcam, microphone, sorry, uh, then, they, then we have other input devices, not output, such as webcams and then microphones and uh, uh, also touch screen. So those are kind of the input devices that we will we'll be learning in the lesson. And then the second uh, type of peripheral devices are output devices. Output can be of uh, like various forms, like right. right? Uh, we see the output such as electronic displays so or printed sheets or videos uh, or it could be audio. Uh, so those are the output forms and output device is any piece of computer hardware used to communicate the results of data that has been processed. For an example, uh, the monitors. Uh, and then we have printers such as dot matrix, inkjet laser, or 3D printers. And then we have plotters that gives output. And then we have multimedia projectors, speakers, and control devices, and headphones. Those are the uh, those are some examples for output devices. And the third type of uh, peripheral devices is storage devices. Uh, like as the name suggests, those are used to store the data. Examples such as hard disk, SSD, CDR, DVD, Blu-ray, uh, USB sticks. Uh, the storage devices can be internal or external to a computer. So let's go through uh, after this lesson. In this lesson, we will, as I mentioned earlier, we will be talking only about the first circle, which is the input peripheral devices. And the next lesson will be the second circle, which is in the middle on output peripheral devices. And, uh, and the lesson after that is on the storage uh, devices. Right. Okay. So the first category is input device. We will go through these input devices. Input peripherals are devices that send data to the computer and they allow the user to control the computer or store data captured from the uh, sources outside the system. Uh, here I have listed some of the input devices and we will be talking uh, about these 
in the next screens, right? A keyboard uh, is an input device and it allows users to enter data such as text or commands, uh, other alphanumeric characters into a computer or any other electronic device. And it is one of the primary input devices used for typing and uh, interacting with the computer systems. Uh, and also keyboards connect to the computer or device through different interfaces. The most common connected options include the USB. It could be either wired or wireless. And then we can, we have Bluetooth uh, keyboards. And some keyboards feature having like ergonomic designs to enhance the comfort and reduce the strain during when we're using for extended hours. Uh, we get a strain in our hand. So in order to uh, in order to avoid that, they have developed ergonomic designs. Uh, ergonomic keyboards may have a curved or split layout and it allows users to position their hands and wrist in a more natural and relaxed position. And uh, also keyboards are compatible with a wide range of devices including desktop computers, laptops, tablets and even the gaming consoles. Uh, and also they are working with different operating systems such as Windows, Mac OS, Linux or mobile uh, platforms like Android and iOS. And there are uh, keyboard shortcuts that users can use. Uh, you are already using those shortcuts. I will just mention a few uh, just to remember. Uh, it helps us. I mean, it gives us the speed and some, uh, makes our lives easy. So control and C together we use for copy and control plus V, V for paste and then control and uh, A for selecting all in a document and control and S for saving a document. So likewise, there are so many uh, keyboard shortcuts that you can use. Right. Uh, pointing devices. Uh, these Devices that I have listed, they are all together called as pointing devices. A pointing device used to control the movement of the pointer, like for an example, a cursor on the screen. Uh, the major pointing devices in uh, used today are like mouse, optical mouse, touchpad, uh, touch screen, uh, stylus, joystick, trackball. So let's talk about basic pointing input device. The, uh, mouse that we use with our computers All right okay so now we know mouse is a pointing device you can give input to the computer with the help of the mouse a mouse is an input device used to control the cursor or pointer on a computer screen uh, it allows us to navigate graphical user interfaces uh, select items and like perform various actions by moving the mouse across the surface and clicking its buttons. Like we have right click and left click and then double click. So mouse can be connected to the computer through different interfaces such as wired mouse, uh, typically use a USB or PS2 connection. And uh, wireless mouse use technologies like Bluetooth or radio frequency to communicate uh, wirelessly with the receiver. Uh, wireless mouse require batteries or so rechargeable power sources so that we there are no wires connecting. And optical mouse use optical or laser sensors to track the movement and translate it into a cursor movement on the screen. Uh, the first uh, picture is on a mechanical mouse that is like the one we have used for a long time uh, in the history. And then we have the trackball. You can see the red color button in the second picture. Uh, that's also an input device. And then we the third picture is uh, uh, an optical mouse. And then the fourth one is a, a wireless mouse. Right. Now we have joystick. A joystick is an input device primarily used for controlling the movement and direction of objects. Uh, most of you will have used, used this in video games and we can see uh, this is used in flight simulators or that sort of interactive applications. Uh, it consists of a handheld uh, lever or stick that can be tilted or moved in 
different directions to provide input commands. Uh, joysticks typically provide movement along two or more axes, commonly referred to as x-axis and y-axis. The stick can be moved forward, backward, left or right to control the movement in the corresponding direction. Uh, some joysticks also provide rotational movement along uh, additional axes, allowing for more, more precise control or specialized applications. Joysticks can be connected to a computer or gaming console using various interfaces including USB, Bluetooth or proprietary connections. The choice of connectivity depends on the device and the compatibility or requirements. Microphone. A microphone is a device uh, that converts sound waves into a, uh, an electrical signal. The, it allows it to be recorded or amplified or transmitted. And it is an essential tool for capturing audio in various applications uh, such as recording music, broadcasting, podcasting, public speaking, communication, and such as uh, those stuff. And then Microsoft uh, phones can be connected to uh, audio recording devices or sound systems using various connectors. Uh, and... And we also have the microphones in our smartphones or laptops. And USB microphones have a built-in USB connections for direct computer connectivity. And then we have this input uh, device called barcode readers. Uh, a barcode reader, also known as a barcode scanner, is a device that reads and decodes barcodes which are machine-readable representations of uh, data in the form of uh, parallel lines. You can see in the diagram, uh, in the form of parallel lines or patterns. Barcode readers are uh, commonly used in uh, various industries and applications to quickly and accurately capture information encoded in uh, those barcodes. Uh, barcode readers can be connected to various devices such as computers, uh, point of sale post systems or mobile devices uh, through USB or Bluetooth or wireless connections. Most of the uh, factories, when they are taking the inventory control of their products available, they use these barcodes to get that information. Uh, the barcode reader get that information through the barcode and then it transfers to the uh, computer system, the software. Right. Next we have scanners. A uh, scanner is a device that allows you to convert uh, physical documents or images into digital format. It uh, captures the content of a printed page or image and converts it into a, uh, an electronic file that can be stored, edited or shared or uh, you know, printed. Uh, when we have a, a hard copy of a photo or something or any image, if you want to get it digitized, we you can use the scanner. Uh, scanners are capable of scanning at uh, different resolutions measured in dots per inch, uh, shortened as DPI. In higher resolution settings result in sharper and more detailed uh, clear scans, uh, but the file size will be bigger. And if you if the uh, lower resolution settings are used, then the photos would be not that much clear, but the file size will be uh, less. And scanners connect to your computer using various interfaces such as uh, USB, Ethernet, or Wi-Fi. And USB is the most uh, common and widely supported interface. Right. Next, we have a webcam. A webcam is a digital video camera that captures video and audio and transmits it over the internet. It is primarily used for uh, video chatting, video conferencing, live streaming or recording uh, videos. And webcams, uh, <coughs> webcams capture video in real time using a built-in camera. Uh, sensor they can record video at various resolutions ranging from standard definition to high high definition the HD quality and even 
4K for more advanced models. Uh, most webcams come with a built-in microphone to capture audio along with the video and this enables two-way communication uh, during video chats or conferences without the need for an external microphone. Uh, webcams connect to the computers or other devices through USB ports. They are typically plugged uh, plug in and play devices meaning they can be uh, easily connected and recognized by the operating system without requiring any other additional software installations right uh, next we have a graphic tablet uh, a graphic tablet also known as a digitizing tablet or sometimes we call it as a pen tablet uh, it's an input device that allows users to draw or sketch and create digital artwork uh, directly on a uh, pressure sensitive surface using a stylus or pen like device you, if you can see the diagram uh, this is a graphic tablet and you, you can see the uh, pen like device the stylus uh, graphic tablets feature a flat rectangular drawing surface that responds to the pressure and the movement of the stylus the surface can vary in size with smaller tablets or suitable for portability and larger tablets offering more drawing space. And graphics tablets come with a stylus or pen-like device that is used to draw on the surface. The stylus is typically battery powered and can vary in design and functionality. It may feature buttons or an eraser at the end. Uh, allowing for quick access to different tools and functions and graphic tablets connect to a computer or other devices using a, a USB or wireless connection and some graphic tablets come with additional programmable buttons known as express keys that can be customized to perform specific functions or access uh, frequently used tools and some advanced graphic tablets feature a built-in display that allows artists to draw directly on the screen so i think we are done oh no we have one more uh, input device okay the next uh, actually few more yeah the next input device type we need to know is the biometric scanners uh, biometric scanners are devices that use uh, biological characteristics or behavior patterns to identify and authenticate individuals uh, as the name suggests, it's biometric, bio in the sense like uh, hum uh, yeah, humans, so, so we are using it for biometric scans. These scanners capture unique physical or behavioral traits and then convert them into digital data and compare them against the stored templates or databases for identification or verification purposes. Uh, types of biometric scanners are like fingerprint. It, ge it gets your fingerprint and then it checks with the fingerprint that is uh, in the database or the software system and matches uh, if they are identical. And if it is identical, it uh, allows you to enter a building or something like that. And then other type of uh, biometric scanners are facial recognition scanners. Uh, iris scanners, retina scanners, voice recognition scanners. So biometric scanners offer advantages such as uh, enhanced security, uh, convenience because you don't have to carry anything. You just put your finger and then you, uh, you are in. And uh, as biological traits are like difficult to forge or replicate, this, is, uh, this gives more uh, security. Uh, then we have chip and pin devices. Chip and pin machines are like card payment devices that allow, allows customers to make in uh, store transactions using a combination of their uh, either credit card or debit card and their personal identification number, which is uh, pin. Uh, these machines allow customers to pay for goods and services by card and making transactions more accessible and secure you don't have to carry your money but you have you can use your debit or credit card and through the chip and pin devices uh, you can do the payments a chip and pin card reader also known as uh, an emv card reader is a device 
used to uh, process payments made with chip enabled credit or debit cards it provides a secure and convenient method of accepting card payments in various business settings uh, chip and pin card readers are designed to accept chip enabled payment cards which contain an embedded microchip and these cards are commonly used worldwide like visa card mastercard uh, and offer enhanced security compared to a traditional magnetic uh, stripe cards uh, emv that i mentioned earlier stands for europay uh, mastercard and visa emv the organizations that develop the global standard for chip enabled payment cards and chip and pin card readers feature a slot or contact pad where customers can insert their chip cards like your credit card or debit card the device reads the encrypted data stored in the chip and securely communicates with the uh, card issuer system to authorize the payment in addition to reading the chip uh, chip and pin card readers have a keypad or touch screen interface that allows customers to enter their personal identification number basically your pin number the pin serves as an added layer of security uh, to authenticate the card holder during the transaction so uh, so it gives more security right next we have uh, sensors yeah this is the last input type that we are discussing uh, you can find different types of sensors in our homes officers uh, cars and etc like uh, working uh, to make our lives easier by turning on the lights by detecting our presence or adjusting the room temperature and detect smoke or fire so those are some uh, real life scenarios and sensors are input devices that detect and measure physical properties or environmental conditions and convert them into electrical or digital signals and they play a crucial role in a wide range of applications including industrial automation healthcare environmental monitoring uh, consumer electronics and many more uh, sensors operate based on specific detection principles which can include uh, optical sensors Uh, optical sensors use light uh, to detect and measure various properties such as the intensity wavelength or reflection of the uh, uh, light and then we have uh, pressure sensors pressure sen uh, sensor uh, pressure sensors measure the uh, force or the pressure exerted on them uh, they are commonly used in applications such as uh, pressure monitoring in industrial processes and then tire pressure sensing and also some medical devices and then another type is temperature sensors uh, temperature sensors detect and measure changes in temperature uh, temperature sensors are primarily used for air conditioning control freezers and other environmental control devices and now they are used in manufacturing agriculture and also in the healthcare sectors uh then we have accelerometers accelerometers measure changes in the acceleration or uh, vibration uh, like they are used in applications such as uh, motion sensing in smartphones uh, gaming controllers and automotive uh, safety systems and then we have proximity sen uh, sensors uh proximity sensors detect the presence or absence of objects in close proximity uh Uh, proximity sensors are commonly utilized in the retail business like uh, since they can detect the motions and vehicles are another important and long standing use case the proximity sensor alerts the automobile your car uh, when you are driving while reversing for any time of uh, obstruction uh, then it uh, the proximity sensor uh, gives the command and then you get notified that there are something that uh, you you might hear a sound or something that alerts and then uh, we have uh, gas sensors that detects and measure the concentration of uh, specific gases in the environment uh, they find applications in air quality monitoring industrial safety and gas leak detection and we also commonly see smoke sensors in our homes uh it uh, 
gives an alarm when the uh, smoke sensor detects smokes uh, inside our houses and it uh, uh, gives an alarm and it's good for safety. Right. Okay. Uh, there are a few questions that we are going to discuss based on the things that we uh, learned today. Uh, I'll read out the question. Uh, Kiki buys a smartphone. The smartphone uses a sensor that detects movement of the device. That detects movement of the device. One way in which the smartphone uses data from the sensor is to switch itself off if dropped. Give two other ways in which the smartphone could use data from the sensor. I hope you have used, uh, when you are using your smartphone, when you are rotating the screen, it changes the view, right, from uh, portrait to landscape likewise. So that is uh, one thing. Uh, it detects the movement of the device and based on the movement, it uh, gives you the uh, portrait view or the landscape view and then uh, uh, when you are using uh, health apps right or step count apps uh, it detects your movement and gives okay you have traveled this many steps you have walked up to these kilometers likewise that is also uh, another thing and then uh, when you are to, uh, taking photographs using your smartphone camera the image stabilization, it's, it, uh, it gets the sensor, uh, detects the movement of your device. And uh, once you are still only, it gives the proper picture. So those are some of the examples uh, that uh, which the smartphone could use data from the sensor uh, that detects the movement. Right. Uh, now we will try two MCQs taken from the 2011 uh, past paper. Uh, the most appropriate input device for freehand drawing is, we discussed this, it's the answer uh, number A, graphic tablet. And then the second one, an input devices uh, device needed to control the humidity in a greenhouse is, we just talk about the sensors, uh, the humidity sen sensor that is number a sensor and then uh, is a game console an input or output or input output device and explain uh, a game console is both input and output uh, game control uh, because game con uh, games control such as uh, game pad or joystick uh, motion sensing provide uh, the input and then we also have the sound output or uh, visual output uh, onto a tv so that is the output so because of that uh, game consoles are both input and output okay two more uh, MCQ questions. A user gains access to a secure area by placing their finger on a scanner. We discussed that as well. This type of uh, scanner is known as biometric, right? Because we discussed about different biometric scanners, uh, finger scanners, facial recognition scanners, retina scanners, likewise. The last one, which one of these devices can be used for both data input uh, and output trackable touch screen mouse and speaker out of these uh, we are getting the both input and output from the touch screen right we can give the input by touching the touch screen and also we get the output from the touch screen itself right okay hope you understood the, these questions and please go through some more past papers as well so we'll be on uh, output devices thank you for listening and uh, good luck with your studies <laughs>